Well, John Hart, thanks for coming by. You know, um, we've been waiting for a long time. Are you going to are, are you going to have a new book for us sometime soon? We've been waiting four, four, five years for your next book. You hit the literary scene with four wonderful bestsellers, bestsellers, and best reviewed books. Uh, when can we get another one? Well, as luck would have it, this is an advanced <laughs> copy. Uh, yeah, so the, the new book is coming, is the short version to your question. Um, it'll be out in May of 2016. There'll be almost five years between books. I'm a little embarrassed to say that, but um, I spent a year writing what I thought would be book five. It's got 300 pages into it, just didn't much care for it. And I went back to the publishers and asked them to uh, let me put that to the side and start anew, and they were very gracious, and they said we would rather have the right book slowly than the wrong book quickly. Uh, and fortunately, they're over the moon delighted with this book. It took me two years to write it. Uh, they've had it for some time, getting it ready for publication now, and uh, my understanding is it's going to be their biggest book of the spring so next year. when will we start hearing about it? Well, uh, the Advanced Reader's Edition, which is what this mm -hmm. is, they're being mailed out in to the next two weeks. book sellers and reviewers. Reviewers, so. uh, magazine editors, um, you know, anyone that is part of the buzz building process that goes into building a big book. You know, publishers really know how to do this, but they need a lot of time to do it. Generally, if they're going to do something big, they like to have this six, seven, eight months before wow. the book comes out so they can really work it. I mean, the, the librarians need to be talking about it, the book selling community. Uh, the reviewers, the bloggers, uh, they, they like to give those people a really good long time to, to absorb it. Well, maybe they're sending you around to explain what the book is. What, what, what's your sort of short pitch about how this uh, book is going to meet the publisher's expectations? Well, I, I can say several things about the book. Um, I, I like to think that every book I've done has been complex and deep in terms of the characters and all the moving parts. Um, you know, the plots hopefully click at the end in some, re you know, revelatory way. Um, I can honestly say this is the most complex novel I've ever written, and there are so many moving parts, so many fascinating characters, so many competing motivations. Um, it, it was one of the reasons it t took me two years to write it is because there were so many different ways it could be done. And so um, in, in terms of answering the specific question of what the book is about, uh, all I can say is that like every book I've ever done, it's about good people caught in terrible circumstances trying to navigate their way through the aftermath of some really foul deed. This is the first book I've written where it's involved a serial killer and multiple body counts. Um, I did work very hard to make it something other than a run-of-the-mill serial killer with the standard motivations. This is not a sexual predator. This is not someone that was beaten as a child. This is a complex person, not, not necessarily redeemable or easily loved, or nor should he be loved. Uh, but by the end of the book, I think you start to understand why he did what he did. And the meat of the novel is about all the people that orbit this person's life, knowing and unknowing, and how his misdeeds affect them in childhood and adulthood, um, what it does to the town, and then the absolute and utter shock in understanding who this person is, why he's been doing this, uh, I think it's a very different book for me and, and maybe different than a lot of the serial killer books out there. Tell us there. about uh, the lead character, her name, and what she um, looks like and what she does, just so we can be looking out absolutely, for her. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, any good book set in the South needs some religion in it. Uh, I believe that. Uh, she is a fallen preacher's daughter, for lack of a better term. She was, you know, in the fold of this loving church and a uh, very religious family as a young person when something traumatic happened to her um, and to the point that she was prepared and in fact planning to kill herself and her father couldn't make it right, the church couldn't make it right and uh, a brilliant young police officer uh, actually stopped her from killing herself completely changed the course of her life to the point that she turned her back on all the religious upbringing she had and developed a fascination with secular justice and man's laws and punishment that is real and visceral for uh, bad people doing bad things to, to good well, people. And so the story is very much hers. Why does she become what she is and to what length is she willing to go to protect those that are unable to protect themselves? Well, all those bad things that you write about are good things for those of us who enjoy the stories that you tell us, John Hart. I so love the bad things. Looking forward to May when we can all be reading this book and talking about it some more and looking forward to another book in less than four and a half years. No, the next one will be much more, much quicker, <laughs> I promise. It's going really well.
Good luck. Thanks Thank for coming. You,